Hello everybody, Gavin McCormack here and we are in South Georgia. Now as you can see, we're sitting in the middle of a lake. This week we're talking all about cycles and in particular the hydrocycle or as you may know it, the water cycle. Now behind me we have a set of mountains and you may think that the mountains and this lake are not connected at all but you would be mistaken. You see, behind those mountains, there is a set of zephyrs, or air currents. And as those air currents travel towards a mountain, they are forced to rise. Now, hidden within those currents is water vapor. Yes, it's a gas. But as it rises, it starts to cool. And as it cools in that higher altitude air, it condenses. This condensation turns them into clouds. Beautiful white fluffy clouds that you can see on the mountains right behind me. Now as those clouds start to accumulate that water vapor, they become heavier and heavier and they turn darker until gravity takes over. And what happens then is quite miraculous. Gravity pulls out the water vapor from those clouds and yes, it falls as rain, just like the rain that we have here. That rain then accumulates on the ground, causing rivers, lakes, ponds and even oceans. And what's amazing about that is water brings life. And as you can see behind me, we have a lot of life here living in this lake. There are many, many fur seal pups sitting right behind me. Now the amazing thing about a cycle is it never ever ends. You see right now it's not sunny and it's not warm. In fact, it's quite cold. But as the sun comes out, the water in this lake will start to evaporate, turn to gas once again, rise up into the atmosphere, become clouds, and then the whole cycle starts all over again. Now this week, we want you to try to document this cycle in a very, very creative way. We want you to get all of those different methodologies, put them together so that you can start to understand this wonderful cycle before we move on to the rock cycle next week. Thank you.